In this video, we're going to learn how to pipe server-side events straight into ClickHouse. We'll be doing that using the Wikimedia Recent Changes feed, which gives us a stream of server-side events for changes being done to Wikimedia properties. As well as viewing it in the browser, we can also call it via curl with these parameters to return only the data part of each message. Now, as I mentioned, we want to load this data into ClickHouse, and I've got a server running, so let's connect to it with our ClickHouse client. And then we're going to create ourselves a table called wiki. We're going to have just one column. It's going to be the JSON type, and then we're going to have a meta.dt string inside of there so that we can order the data by that column. Let's then go back to our other tab. We'll kill that process that was streaming all the messages, and we're going to then pipe them into our ClickHouse client, and we're going to have our query insert into our wiki table, and we'll tell it it's JSON as object. So it's going to treat every row as a JSON object and put it, hopefully, into our ClickHouse database. We'll then come over to another tab. We're going to call a watch on ClickHouse client. We'll turn pretty row formatting off, and then we're going to count for each part that gets created in ClickHouse from that wiki table, how many records has it got. And if we then look at that, you can see we wait for a few seconds, nothing is being ingested. So I expected this data to get ingested. So this is a little bit frustrating. Now, the reason we don't see anything is because of the defaults used for data ingestion on the client and on the server. So let's go back to our streaming code. We're going to update the call to the ClickHouse client with some parameters. The first one is max insert block size, which controls when the client sends a block of rows to the server. Now, the default is more than a million, so it's going to take us a long time to get there because we're only getting about two or three records per second. And so what we're saying now is we're going to change it to send the block when we get to 10 records, so it's much smaller. The next one is min insert block size bytes. So this is a server setting that squashes those blocks received from the client into parts of a specific size in bytes. So we're going to disable this setting. And then finally, we've got min insert block size rows. And this, again, a server setting that squashes blocks into parts with a specific number of rows. And we're setting it to 10 for our demo. And if we move over to our watch tab, this time we can see the new parts coming in. So we can see when there's a new part, it will have 10 records. And then you can see there's a bigger part where everything's being merged in the background. We can also come back and change that min insert block size rows to 20. So we're still going to be sending blocks of 10 from the client, but then on the server, we're going to effectively put two of those together before we create a part. If we come back to our watch command, you can see we've got one much bigger part where things have been merged together, and then the new ones coming in have got 20 rows each. And you can pipe any data that you like into ClickHouse like this. It doesn't have to be server-side events. If you liked this video, check out this one next, which shows how to ingest data into ClickHouse from a streaming data platform.